Okay, so we all hear about operating systems, and I don't know about you, but I never really thought about what that meant, except that my husband is an Apple user, and he talked me into getting a Mac, and I turned it on, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's nothing that looks the same. Where's my start button? How do I do this? And so we kind of just wanted to take a step back and talk about a little bit about what that um, means. So you have an operating system on your computer. If you didn't, your computer would just be the tower or the laptop with the screen. The operating system is that thing that makes it run. So it's how we can kind of communicate with the pieces of the computer to make it do what we want to do. Um, from there, we then add those applications like Word and PowerPoint and Gatekeeper and all of those things that we use on the computer that make it work. So I tried to find, Ray drew a very fun graphic with lots of arrows in it. Um, and normally I like arrows because I'm a pretty linear person. Um, but I found this one online and kind of thought it was nice because it helps you kind of see how all these things build. So when you change operating systems, you're not, you don't necessarily have to change your computer. So you might upgrade from Windows 7 to Windows 10. That's one that's happening um, in our agency and around the world right now. The computer itself is still there. The operating system just got laid on top of it. The applications are still going to fit on top of that operating system. They just might look or act a little bit differently based on the new format. So Kaylee and Ray, our computer science and or psychology folks, um, <laughs> do you <laughs> do you want to add to this a little bit? Well, yeah. So I just wanted to, to make everybody aware of that so the hardware that you have in in, in Anne's graph, which is decidedly better than what I sent. Um, the, the, the hardware can actually um, accommodate different kinds of operating systems to some degree, you know, so, so like you can run on, on the same computer, you could run Linux, you could run Chrome, you could run Windows. Um, Apple's a little bit of a different, different animal there, but, but basically the same hardware can run different things. Um, that operating system is just kind of like the rules of the road and, and how we how we make things all um, work together and then the applications um, run on top of that and and the operating system is what allows it to do what it needs to do. Does that make sense? And we're kind of used to that when we hear people talk about downloading an app on our phones because the next thing they say is, well, do you have an Android or an Apple? You know, those are really just operating systems on a device, you know, on a mini computer that fits in your pocket. And then the apps kind of lay on top of that. I just think sometimes, and I don't know about you all, but I kind of forget that when I look at my computer. Like I don't apply what I know about the phone sometimes onto what I know about a computer. It feels like two separate knowledge bases. And so um, I thought this might kind of help. Something that we run into is that often when we look at those operating systems, they look different. And then we're like, wait, it doesn't look the same. How do I do this? Um, or it's your turn for an upgrade and Kaylee hands you a new computer and says, okay, here's how you start it, go. And you turn it on and you're like, it doesn't look the same at all. So in all things technology, we always wanna make things look better and brighter and greater and more awesome. And, but the goal is always gonna be the same. Like maybe the, so this is an example of Windows 7, which is what my computer was until last year, and then Windows 10. If you look, some of these words do kind of match. They just made it look really cool and sleek and buttony because in today's world, people are using touch screens. So you might be sitting at a, at a computer that if you touch the screen, it would actually allow you to touch the button, you know, to select that more like an iPad. So they've changed the operating system to accommodate what our new technology is. The thing that threw me was it always was that Windows button, but it always was like a start button, right? Like I looked for start and now it's not, it's a window. And I'm like, what? This isn't the same. But really it is gonna bring me to the same place once you get used to it. So if you get a new device, and we're actually gonna do a tutorial later on, um, there's tons of stuff out there on you know, how to do this in 
whatever you have now. So my first piece of advice to you is if you get handed a new computer or if you upgrade, all you really need to know is what you now have. Because if you know that, you can type in, how do I insert whatever you're trying to do in Windows 10? And it will tell you the difference. You know, it'll say, well, in seven, you did this, this, and this. And in 10, now go here. If you were coming from never knowing anything about a computer at all, like nothing, I know you might be here thinking, I don't know anything now. You absolutely do. Like you're all on a computer, you use it, and you're in a Zoom meeting. So you already are like not a novice. <laughs> but if you didn't know anything, Windows 10 would actually make more sense. It's just that we're, we were used to one way and now we're doing it a different way. It would be like if you went to England and drove a car, they do the same things, but it's on the wrong side of the car. I always think of in the holiday when she's driving that little Mini Cooper and she's like, oh my gosh. That's what I feel like when I switched platforms, but it's really the same thing. So we're gonna kind of walk through how to find some of those things today. Ray, I, I can't help it. I had to make a no, romantic no, comedy. I, very, no, I, very, very good analogy <laughs> and a good film too. Nice, nice, nice film quote. <laughs> we watch that every year when we put up the Christmas tree. Okay, so questions about how an operating system works or what you have on your computer even. Okay, we're gonna keep going, but don't hesitate to jump in because I don't really need to talk for an hour ever. I can, but I don't need to. So the desktop, you've got logged in. We talked about that last week got use your password and your username you got to the desktop um just want to talk through some of the things that you're going to see there and ways that you can make this kind of work better for you and like i said if you um so right now my desktop is on my laptop but if i'm sitting at my desk my desktop is on a monitor like my main desktop and so its resolution is a little bit different. And what I mean by that is if I measured across, it's going to look a little different. So if you think about um, back in the day when we went to the movies and then you got the VHS and you, or the DVD and you would have the option to do widescreen versus fit your TV screen and it would cut off the edges just a little bit, that's what the computer doesn't want to happen. And so if you're on a bigger monitor and then you shrink it down, Maybe it can't get nine icons down the page, and so it only gets eight. It bumps it to the next one, and then whatever you had in that bottom left-hand corner isn't there anymore. It got bumped to the next tier. So it's not because it's gone necessarily, it's just not in the same place. But, so icons, all those little pictures on your screen, we see them as apps a lot of times when we think about our phone but it doesn't necessarily have to be an app. It could be a folder. It could be a shortcut to a website. It could be a shortcut to the F drive. I have the F drive right on here. It could be, um, I don't have any files on here right now, but all those, and we're gonna talk about all those different things that can be in a minute, but just, this is just supposed to be a quicker way to get to whatever those things are. They all live somewhere else too. It's not like they live right here. It's just like a quicker access to get to it. Um, the recycling bin. Have any of you ever looked in the recycling bin? Marie shaking her head yes. Okay, good. If you accidentally delete something, Windows is so kind to say, hey, did you really wanna delete that? I'm gonna leave it sit here for a while sometimes a really long while, you could go back in your recycling bin and be like, oh yeah, I deleted that like five years ago and it's still there. No, nah, not usually five years. There's usually a date that it um, will eventually delete, kind of like in your emails. But if you open that and you delete something, you're like, oh my gosh, I didn't mean to make that go away. Where did it go? Oftentimes you can find it there. Uh, the start menu. As I said, it's a little window now. It's that bottom little window that pops up. So if you're on your computer, you can play around with that today. The other couple of things I really like are along the bottom of the computer itself. And it's kind of helped me be a little more efficient. Um, so if you look at this picture, you can see that the there's a row of icons 
of the, the icon pictures along the bottom of my desktop. One of them is to my documents. It literally is a link to my documents where I save all of my stuff. So you can tell by my desktop that I am not a desktop saver. It makes me crazy. I sit down at Sherry Bale's computer and I wanna start organizing things because my brain works just a little bit differently. Not to call out Sherry, she knows I love her. It's nothing against her. I just cannot organize like that. That being said, Rain, I've had a conversation about how I have OCD tendencies. It's okay. The next so we have we have taken a vote though, and Sherry's Sherry's desktop is the prime candidate for reorganization. There's there's that's there. So okay. If it makes you feel any better, Sherry, I have the <laughs> urge to do that at people people's actual desks too. Don't lie and think that I haven't wanted to make all the papers line up on Ray's desk before as well. So it's I not. I did clean it off a little bit. <laughs> well, it's not you're just- in, You're in good company. You, you came in a close second or, or you are, uh, Michelle Dexter came in a close second to you, I guess. I, I think that. she's here too. So, yeah, so it's not a judgment. It's just, you know, we organize differently and we're gonna have another session where we talk about different ways you can organize and save your files so that you can find them easier. But so what I have done is things that I use a lot I've put along that bottom. It's called the task tray. Picture it kind of like a bulletin board. When you put something there, you actually pin it there. So it's like your cork board that you had hanging in your office and you'll be able to access those things faster. So Outlook is something that I use all the time. So I have that there. Sticky notes, I am a post-it note person, but working remote, I realized that my actual paper post-it notes don't do quite as much for me because I'm on the road in our house with Rosie so much. So I actually have a post-it note sticky app that pops up on my desktop. Um, Chrome, Teams, and then it shows the ones that I have open. So PowerPoint and Word are highlighted. You can see underneath it. That means that I have something open there. Now your computer might look slightly different. Um, you might have never touched this taskbar and just accidentally pinned things there. Or you might only have the things that were default that Windows thought you would like. I did customize this a little bit and I actually even have it in order. Like if it gets slid and Outlook's not second in, the, in line, I have to like put it back because I know where Outlook is so I can just click on it. The difference is if you look at this versus something on your desktop, it doesn't have that those words underneath it. So if you look on my, the picture of Chrome up on the flower, it actually says Google Chrome underneath, where in the task tray, it's just that picture. So you're probably gonna wanna put things there that you're more familiar with. So if you're getting to the point where you're gonna use Gatekeeper Anywhere and you wanna put that G in there, I'm sure that they have a little icon that will pop up there so you can have a shortcut. And then in the bottom right-hand corner, is your date and time settings. On most computers, if you click over there at date and time, there's a little asterisk there and it pops up with a bunch of options. So right now, just looking at that picture, computers have moved all to you know, pictures instead of words in a lot of ways. So you can see that my battery is charging. That's that first one. You can see the little battery there. You can see the Wi-Fi signal. I have strong Wi-Fi in the location that I'm at. You can see the little speaker signal it's telling me that the view that I can see, that my headset is like halfway. The little cloud means that I have things backing up to the cloud, and then it shows me the time and date. Now yours might look a little bit different, and don't worry, but it's something else that as you get more comfortable and as you get using your computer more, you can actually customize that for what you wanna see. If I'm having network issues, I wanna be able to see that Wi-Fi signal to see if I'm having trouble. If I'm sitting at my desk at work, Wi-Fi might not be that big of an issue. So if it's not there, it's not something I'm ever gonna have put there. But it's another way that you can really kind of make the computer work better for you. Ray, things to add about desktops. Um, not right now, you've done a really good job there. The only, uh, the only other thing is that as we get into it, um, there's also different little tricks you can you can use to um, uh, to organize your desktop quickly and to uh, minimize things all at the same time so you don't have to click a hundred different windows um, and but we can we can show you those as we go along 
Okay, so the next thing I wanted to point out is just about the icon. So I think in my head, I always thought an icon was gonna take me to a program, but it doesn't necessarily have to. It can take me to a file. It can take me to a, and it, or it could take me to a, let's say it a different way. I can save files straight onto my desktop or I could have them saved in my documents or on the F drive or something else. And it can just be a shortcut to it. So we're going to talk um, in our next session all about saving documents and how that works and how memory works. Um, and we'll have our IT folks kind of give us some of the tips and tricks because I know even I don't do it the best way. But if you were going to create a shortcut, so let's say you always are in the, I was trying to think of a section. So I know in the ISC folder, there's a budget section. And maybe Michelle Dexter wants to be able to get there, but she doesn't want to have to make a copy of everything that's in there to be on her computer, but she doesn't want to have to go to my documents and to F drive and to then SSA and then her folder. You could make a shortcut by highlighting the folder that you wanted, right clicking, and then saying create a shortcut. It'll make it right there in that folder. And you're thinking, well, that's great, but I don't need a shortcut to that folder in that folder. You can then cut that shortcut and put it wherever you wanted it to. Or if you right click, you can say send to and then desktop as a shortcut. So I would encourage you, if you were sitting at a computer, click a file right now that's not on your desktop and right click on it and see what it pops up there so that you can kind of play around and see how you might do that. If you're on a phone, just keep thinking about how you might do this on your computer. And Ray, correct me if I'm wrong, for our staff who are joining us that are um, working at the school, I know they're sharing devices sometimes. Their desktop applications are gonna load with their profile? Um, well, first off, most of our desktop applications should be common amongst everybody. Right. So when, when we install those, um, like for instance, Microsoft Office. When you install Microsoft Office, you can make it for each user on the on a computer or you can just say this is for everybody right and so most of our applications we restored we, we, we've stored on there for everybody but if so, i make a shortcut on you know, my short, yeah shortcuts would be attached to that individual so that would so when you load on a different computer it would still be in that profile right yep perfect any other questions before we move on Okay, so the next thing, you know, if we are sticking with the idea of the desktop is customizing your desktop. Maybe that's because you want things bigger. Maybe it's because the color blue makes you have a headache. Maybe it's because you want to change the colors of your backgrounds or customize your backgrounds with the seasons. <clears throat> Not that I would be guilty of that at all. Um, but this is going to be where you can go to find that. Now, on some devices, you can just be on the desktop and right click and it'll take you here as well. But not every computer works the same way. So I'm showing you one of the ways to get to it that it's pretty standard across all devices. Um, but just know that with all of these things, just like Ray talked about all the shortcuts with minimizing and all that kind of stuff, there are lots of ways to do most of the things that we're talking about. So if you went to your start menu or your window um, button down in the bottom left-hand corner, that would be where you're going to power on and off. We talked about the universal power symbol um, last time. And then you'll see a gear shift, and that's kind of the universal settings. If you are in Zoom, if you look at um, your Zoom app, you have a settings button there too. Um, so once you click that, it brings up this window. And we're going to talk about a couple of these today. The first one is system. 
and I'm going to see, I believe I can share my screen. So I'm going to stop this and actually share the settings screen. I tested this out. Let's hope that it works. Okay, that makes it a little bit bigger, hopefully. Um, so if I wanted to change, so right now I have a monitor and my laptop. So you can see that it helped figure that out. I could identify and detect. And so if I was setting that up, I could make them. I actually had to have, um, I'm a little, so the mouse, you know, you want it to go back and forth across the two. And so I had to really like figure out where to drag this so that I could go from one screen to another because I kept like running into the edge of the monitor and I couldn't get across the break. Um, brightness and color, you can change that here. Uh, scale, so if you want your apps to be bigger, so you don't like that tiny little G for gatekeeper, or you want Chrome to have a bigger picture, just like you can on your phone, you can change the scale and layout here. Um, if you are gonna have a second monitor, there's lots of things you can play with here, like extending the displays, which means that you can have two things kind of go across. Some people would rather duplicate it. It's really a preference there um, in what makes sense to you and your brain and how you use multiple screens. If you aren't using a multiple screen right now and then you get back to more regular life and you want to use one, definitely reach out to any of our IT folks because they're running multiple screens sometimes two, sometimes three. My brother runs four because he has spreadsheets that have to go across so big. So it really depends on what you're doing and how your job works. Other things over here in this systems box, sound. So if you can't find your microphone, you're having issues, there's sound there. Um, I really wanted to focus just on the things that are gonna change like what your desktop is looking like so those are the ones that are in here. And we'll talk about some of these others and other trainings, but today I really just wanted to talk about um, the things that are customizing your desktop. Questions in here? Uh, so, something I wanna add here, Anne. Yeah. Is if, if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see, um, see the display orientation. Uh, if you go into Ned's office right now and a couple other folks throughout the county, um, they took one of their monitors and made one landscape and made one portrait. And what that does is it means you can take your big monitor, turn it on its end, and have it go, you know, 90 degrees, rotate 90 degrees. The advantage there would be if you're continually working on documents that are very long mm -hmm. as opposed to very wide. And, and it would help you to see more of that document lengthwise, uh, that's, that's an option there. And so you can just turn one of your monitors um, the other way, in this case, making it portrait, and, and, uh, and that will turn your whole, your whole uh, display around. So they have tried to help us with this a little bit. And if you look over in the far right-hand side, there are some like quick tips and they take you to Microsoft's website. So like if you are trying, maybe you made all the fonts on your computer really small on accident. You pressed a button and you can't figure out how to get it back. Now, Ray knows the shortcut to make that be fixed. I have not ever memorized that shortcut. So I would have to come in here and I don't see font right here and I'm already gonna be frustrated, but they have a quick tip here on adjusting my font size. So it'll take me out to the directions and walk me step by step on how to make it back to where I was. So they have tried to make start to make that better. Um, and then they also have started the night version that didn't used to be a like default thing. Um, as we all know, the blue light is not great for us, especially when we're starting to go to sleep. And if you are working some crazy hours right now and want to be able to turn your mind off when you're done, there's an option there to do that but then it talks about like what that means. So just lots of things there that can try to help you. If I go back, the next one I wanna look at is personalization. There we 
we go. Um, so this is the fun one for me because you get to change like the fun stuff. The first thing I do when I get a new computer is I change the background off of the Windows default because I don't really like the window. It's just what I do. Um, so here you can just do those change the fun things. You know, you can have a slide show um, or you could have a picture. You know, I know Ray changes his background quite often too because I get to see all the fun places he's been on vacation in the background of his computer. Um, you can do changing it often, you know, all those kinds of fun things. It's not necessarily something that you have to do, but if you're staring at your computer for eight hours a day, it's nice to have something that you want to look at. Colors are here as well. So especially if you, certain colors help you or um, don't help you, you know, if you prefer to look at things in a darker mode, maybe you don't like that really bright light, um, you can change that. You can change how the apps look so they could be dark. So there's an example of what it looks like in dark mode. Some people really like this. I'm so used to looking at it the other way that I actually have a harder time finding things this way. But it just kind of depends on your preference. But if it makes it easier for you to stare at that screen and get your work done, it's definitely something worth learning about. Um, accent colors, that kind of thing. So title bars, uh, like if you have, if you think about it, when you open a window, you have that little color at the top. It lets you customize all that kind of stuff. Is it something you have to know how to do? Absolutely not. Does it sometimes make things more fun? Sure. Um, other couple I wanted to point out down here is fonts. So not necessarily changing the font, but you'll, you'll notice that sometimes people do. When they email you, everything they have is in a different font. But maybe the one that you have is really difficult for you to read or the person you're working with has a difficult time reading it. There are some other options here. But start menu and taskbar. So this is where I customized that stuff on that taskbar. So how did I, you know, what did I put here? Um, so I have it on. I um, have it at the bottom. Some people like it at the top. You can change it. Um, I have, I was trying to look and see the other things. I do have it on both of my screens. So I have it on multiple displays because I want that to be in both places. There's tons of ways that you can customize this, but it's just nice to be able to show what you want there. Um, and then there's a quick link. How do I customize my taskbar? That's what we needed. Um, which icons appear? And then the start menu is the same way. So I, if you look on my start menu, I actually have um, specific folders in there too. So things that I use often. So I use Microsoft Office products like Word and that kind of stuff fairly often, but I don't use it all the time. So I actually have it in the start menu instead of on my desktop. Um, I know that there are, if you have a newer device, a new Windows 10 device, there's a bunch of stuff in that start menu that Windows thought you wanted, like the PlayStation Store, um, all kinds of random things that they're trying to help you to want to use. If it's not something that you use, you can make that go away so that you don't have to worry about it. Ray comments on um, the, the one thing I would like to go to, if you can go back one, go back to settings. Yep. And let's see. Can you go over to ease of access? That was going to be my next place. Oh, okay, good. Well, in that case, hey, nice transition. <laughs> Thanks. Throw me the gauntlet there. Um, so text sizes. Here's where you're going to change like if you need something to be in a bigger text. I don't know, if, can you guys tell that that got a lot bigger? So instead of having to zoom things or like double clicking or trying to read really closely, you can actually change the size of the text right here. Um, making everything bigger. So making the apps bigger. And if you can, I don't know if you can tell, but it resized everything for me. So kind of like when we look at a website on our phone versus when we look at it on our computer, 
things are going to be a little bit different. Like our help bar over on that far right hand side is gone, but I can read everything much more clearly. You can change the size and color of your mouse and pointer. So maybe it's too small and you lose that white mouse as you're looking through places. You can make that be a different color. I worked with someone at my previous job that she made it bright pink. She never lost her mouse. Um, notifications, that pop-up window, the Outlook sends you, hey, you got a new email? You can control how long that's on here. Or when, out, or when um, Windows itself has like downloads it needs to do, it's gonna pop up on my machine for five seconds, but you can personalize that if it bothers you. The one I, other thing I really like is the brightness. Um, if I change it, I don't think it's gonna affect it for you. Does it get darker for you? How much? No. Zoom doesn't want me to do that. But especially on days where it's really sunny, I never had to play with this until I started the work from home because in my office at Pickerington, it's the same color all the time. Like there's no bright, super bright lights. But sitting here at the desk in my home office, when it's really sunny, I have had to change this to make it brighter so that I can actually see what I'm doing because of the um, other light as well. Also over here on the left hand side, um, Windows has some really cool things built in for us for accessibility, like a narrator. Um, my husband uses the narrator in Outlook every time he sends an email. So he will type the email and then he'll have the narrator read it back to him to make sure that it makes sense because he doesn't proof well when it's in text form. Um, audio, especially in newer devices, there's ways that you can change, you can have um, visual alerts when something's going on, you can have um, different kinds of speakers, you could hook your computer up with your Bluetooth um, headphones or you could hook, hook it up with your Bluetooth um, hearing aid. You know, lots of things that it will now do um, to help you be more successful. Options for closed captioning there, um, changing the language, speech. There's even eye control, depending on the kind of device that you have. So they really have tried to make it more accessible. Um, I haven't played with a lot of these, so I'm not super familiar with them, but we definitely have the resources that if there's something that you wanted to add to or wanted to, to utilize more, we absolutely could find somebody who knows what they're talking about. Ray, things you wanna add? Yeah, so I know we have some people with some visual issues. And so, um, you know, yeah, feel free to, to mess with, with a bunch of these things. Um, the, you know, so like the magnifier is, is a good one. Um, that's one though that when you turn it on, um, figuring out how to turn it off is sometimes difficult. So, you know, it you looks wanna... like it says to press the Windows logo key and escape. Yeah, you, yeah, and and that's assuming that you read that before you tried tried it out. Right, so, which I but, didn't but yeah. do one time. <laughs> but yeah, but but it's really uh, it, it's it's uh, once you're used to that, it's it's really effective um, if you have low vision. Uh, the other one is that high contrast setting. That high contrast is um, uh, that was scientifically designed to be the most readable um, um, combination of fonts and, and uh, uh, backgrounds on, on the computer. So uh, some people really you know, look at it and say, okay, this is perfect for me. And other people say, I, I hate it. So again, if you have visual issues, feel free to try. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, I can't do the high contrast, I'm sorry. <laughs> At least not that one today. But it really does allow you to, you know, make it easier to do what you're doing. Any questions about any of that?
Okay, so the last thing we wanted to talk about today is in this same area, and I'm gonna actually go back to my PowerPoint because I'm gonna pop through so many screens, it's not gonna like it. Give me just a second. So the other way that we're gonna customize our desktop today is getting onto the Wi-Fi. So probably in our past life, for some of us, we used the computer, we sat down at work, somebody from IT had already set it up for us, we turned it on, it was connected to the internet and we went. And then the pandemic happened and they said, oh, take that device and go home and figure out how to use it on your internet. And you think, okay, well, so my child or husband set this up for me and I just knew what button to push on my phone and it was connected to the internet. Now you want me to put a computer on it? Uh, but Windows Kindly and any, any operating system really has um, set up a way so that you can figure out if you're on the network and then the other options for it. So a lot of times you can just go down to that bottom tray where that clock is on your desktop and where you saw the Wi-Fi signal, you'll see uh, something that shows that you don't have Wi-Fi. For my device, it's a little globe, so I'm not on the World Wide Web. I don't know why they picked that, but that's what they did. But always you'll be able to get to it from the settings bar. So I'm gonna show you it that way just so that we're all on the same page. So network and internet, they are pretty nice. They give us little, you know, subtitles on what is gonna be in that folder. For me, when I get there, you see a list there. And on status, it tells me that I am connected. But maybe I want to connect to a different Wi-Fi. Um, so when I look at, if I collect, if I hit show available networks, you can tell that I live in a neighborhood that lots of people have Wi-Fi very close to me. There are actually about 10 Wi-Fi networks that I can join sitting at my computer. When you pull that up, depending on where you live, you might only see one, but that's okay, as long as it's the one that you need. <laughs> so you would select the one that you want, but the thing that I wanted to caution you is most wireless networks have some kind of protection on them now, or some kind of incentivizing, if you will. So if I go sit at Starbucks and I log on to their Wi-Fi, I know that that's not a private network. Like it's not password protected, so lots of other people are on it. But still before I can do it, I have to accept their terms and conditions and they drive me to their Starbucks site before I can use their website or use their Wi-Fi. At my house, if you hit connect, you have to have a really, really long password to get into our wireless. So lots of these, um, if you see that they all say secured, it's because they all have some kind of password on it that I'm gonna have to select. Most of the time when we're at our desks, we're connected via an ethernet cable now that we're using the Wi-Fi, or if you had a laptop that you took from place to place within a building, then you'll be on the Wi-Fi side. Um, so when you're sitting at a computer with your dock, you know, sitting at a desk at one of the, you know, at the administration building or something like that, you might not ever have to worry about this. So this is all kind of new as we move to like the more, not just remote, but movable remote working. Ray, things you want to add about finding your Wi-Fi? Yeah, the, the only thing I, I'd like to add there is that, so those, um, you can see the little signal indicators there as to how strong the signal is. And so sometimes, um, like each, each uh, if, if you look at my house, and, and really as, as, as I look at, uh, at Ann's too, she's got two different choices there in her house for their own network, and that's pretty common. Um, and depending on uh, where you are in the house, how far you are away from the router, all sorts of other things, you might have different 
um, connection strengths for different networks. And so just, just pick, pick the one that's strongest. That's, that's, that's a good option. And sometimes you have to move closer to it to get that signal strength stronger. You know, if you're having an issue with your, you're in a Zoom meeting and it keeps, um, you know, flashing in and out or you get that signal that your internet connection is not strong, it might be that you truly need to move closer to the router and you might see that it went from two bars to three bars. It's just like when we, you know, back in the day when you held your cell phone signal, like you'd hold it like up or you'd go to the top of the hill trying to get signal to get closer to the tower. It's the same idea. It's just in a much smaller area. Now, the one thing I wanted to point out, because some of you have had to use what's called a hotspot, where you take a cell phone or something else and you make that be that internet connection. A hotspot would show up the same way here in your networks once it was on. And you would know, like if I turned on my iPhone right now as a hotspot, it probably called Ann's iPhone. And so it would pop up in that list of options for me. I'm pointing at it like you all can see it. I apologize, I'm talking with my hands. Um, but I would point, you know, I would point, click that one and then it would be using, it would be connecting to my cell phone making it that be the wireless connection instead of to my router. But it's still, you're still gonna find it the same place on your computer, I guess was my point there. So we're gonna stop there for today, but we kind of wanted to talk just for a minute on where do we wanna go next? So I've looked at lots of curriculums online and lots of like, how do we, you know, what are we learning next? What makes sense? But what kinds of things going from here out? I know we wanted to talk about, I know I've got some comments that people want to understand what the cloud is and how we save things there and what that means and then saving files and the best things for that kind of stuff. But what other kinds of things pop into your head? We, I know that we also want to do some specific training on like things you can do in Gatekeeper and things you can do in Word. I got some of that um, from the last survey, but I would love to know if there are other things that we want to, to learn about. Excel. Okay. Well, um, I love that I can make my mouse bigger. I, I did not know that. Now it's huge and blue. So that's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun. And like Ray said, you know, some of this is probably review for all of you, um, but hopefully like Carissa, you learned something new today um, that will make life easier. And that's kind of the goal is that just as we, I'm learning as I'm putting these together too. So please don't think that I know all of this because I don't, I just look things up a lot. Um, but if you think of things, even if it's not today and you want to shoot me a message or, um, I am gonna send a quick survey out just to see what you thought. We tried to do a little bit more, um, more pictures today so you can kind of try it out. And as we get a little further along, we are gonna do some trainings where we ask you to be at a computer um, so that you can try practicing some of the things that we're talking about as well. And a lot of the things that we're teaching too, these will layer one on top of, of another. So as we start getting into applications, for instance, understanding that applications are, you know, operate on top of an operating system is going to be important to know. And so, you know, and, and some of our things, like when you look at um, uh -oh, Gatekeeper Anywhere is a good, is a good example for those of you who are ISCs and you'll soon be trying that. Uh, the, you know, it changes how, um, uh, so you, you can use it on a computer, you can use it on a phone, you can use it on a tablet, and it will change the look slightly based on what operating system you're working on, but it works on anything. So, so uh, you know, cool new, new advantage there, um, but, but it's important to understand how it's working. So, so yeah, so we'll be going over some of those things in detail. Well, and the other thing I'll say, I thought it was awesome, Anne, that you talked about that narrator, um, because I think that's really important for all of us and the people that we support if we're trying to help them learn how to use technology, like that's how life is now. That's a great 
um, asset to be practicing with. And then a lot of these other things that you showed today were awesome that we can share with the people that we, that we support. So thank you. Sorry, I was late. <laughs> yeah, I was playing with the, the Wi-Fi. So I had never tried to put it on the hotspot before, which I did. And then I cut my, I was lost for a minute. And now I'm back. If we're using the hotspot, is, is there a limit? I mean, is there like um, a data limit or something that we need to be aware of? So our, our phone um, um, account is set up on a pooled limit. So yeah, there is a limit, but it's, but it's for the whole account. Um, we've had a couple of people, um, I was just talking to Ned about this the other day. We had a couple of people in this last month go over um, another limit that's kind of set for each phone. And so AT&T tried to just, um, you know, increase our, our uh, cost for that phone, you know, like add additional gigabytes to that phone. And we went back and said, no, let's just add more gigabytes to our whole account and, and go that way. So it's not unlimited, but we've never really approached the whole limit for the whole, um, for the whole agency, but we're in a different time now, right? Things are, things are changing. And, and even when we do get to move back to our offices, I'm not sure all that's going to go away. You know, I mean, everybody's got a cell phone now. I think we're, we're, we're getting, uh, at least on the ISC side, I think we're really getting used to having those. And, and uh, so, yeah, I, I think some of the changes are going to be permanent. I know that for some of the people I serve, texting is the way that they communicate. Yep. And it has changed. You know, it's, it's interesting how much that has changed the ease in getting a hold of people, um, for me at least. I was kind of surprised. Yeah, when, when you look at how people access our websites, um, it is almost always at least half um, from phones. You know, so yeah, just a really popular way to do it. And for me, uh, I, especially with the folks that we support, I look at all that technology as being the great equalizer because it doesn't matter how slow you type, right? It might, it might take me an hour to, to, to make a text to you, but I'm still communicating with you you know, and I'm yeah, doing it on my time. So I think it's, I think it's a really cool thing. And is the um, first one recorded and this one recorded as well, because I totally missed the first one because of conflicting schedules and I came in late to this one because of a, a meeting. So yes. can I watch those? Yes. No, you're totally, um, you're totally screwed, Amy. Sorry. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Ray. You know I hate this. <laughs> Uh, they are saved on our DD YouTube channel, but I'm actually going to send out a link as soon as I convert this and put it up. I'll send a follow up link and I made like a one page like cheat sheet um, of the things that we talked about today so that if you go back later and like, wait, what did she say? How do I get there? Hopefully um, that'll help you as you kind of play around with things, but I would encourage you you know, all of those things in the settings menu that we showed you today, almost all of them, the on and off is right there and it kicks in right away. So feel free to try it. See if that high contrast works better for you or if it gives you a headache like it did for me. Um, you know, play around and see what makes sense and just how to make it easier. So Ray, if I screw this up, I can call you and not Bobby. Uh, you can try. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, of course you can. Of course. Anytime. <clears throat> well, I appreciate you all um, joining us today and happy Wednesday. I will be sending out an invite in the next day or two for our next session. Um, school staff, I know you're about done and we won't leave you hanging. We are going to record these and even if it just means that we get together a little bit during your back to school time or whatever is needed, um, we'll, we'll make sure that we're helping you. Um, and then I also have been compiling some resources that are available for all of us on our own time. Um, if there's just something that you want to learn more about. And so I'll be sending those out as well. And guys from the school, if you're just bored over the summer and you want to reconnect with us, we're here. <laughs> so.